So what we're going to do first is we're going to basically create the app service environment. Now, I already have an app service environment uh, created, but I'm just going to go through creating one uh, so that we can see what the steps are uh, to doing that. And as you saw, we're creating a V3 uh, version of this. So here, um, there are some things that I do want to uh, quickly talk about, and I'm going to switch and over. So over here, you'll notice that anything that you put into an app service environment is going to have the subdomain dot app service environment dot net versus the subdomain that you have for app services, which is Azure websites dot net. Also, you'll notice that there's a distinction between internal and external. So it is actually possible to create an app service environment and still give it a public IP address so that you can still access it uh, from outside. In our case, we're going to be using the internal one, which is typically referred to as an ILB ACE. So next we go over to our hosting. And over here, you have a choice on the top, uh, first of all, between using a physical machine to host this uh, or using um, using the VMs uh, normally. When you use a physical machine, a physical hardware is actually uh, requisitioned uh, for this, and that's what you use. Now, regarding zone redundancy, you can enable zone redundancy for an app service environment, in which case it would be, once again, the instances for the app service plan associated with that environment would be distributed across the various uh, zones within the region that you're in. And finally, let's go over and we look at networking. Uh, so we're not going to be actually connecting this to a network because as stated, I've already created one and an app service environment uh, can take a long time to create hours, two hours, five hours, eight hours. Uh, sometimes it doesn't get created <laughs> or there's some issue. Uh, so it's not something that makes sense to create while uh, the video. Uh, so it's not something that makes sense to create while I'm demonstrating it because I would be taking up a lot of your time. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to skip past this and just going to select the network we want to use. But ultimately, we're not going to create a subnet or do anything because we've already created one. And when we go over to, uh, when I go over and I review that one with you, I will actually show you all the settings and everything that's been set up. So let's let's go ahead and let's actually, let's do that right now. So you've seen how to create an app service environment. So why don't we go and let's look at an actual created app service environment and go through some of the settings that are associated with it. So first thing is the health status, um, and we've seen this before. Uh, this is across multiple resources, uh, so nothing special here. Uh, next thing is the IP address. Here you can see that, um, again, here's a domain suffix that's being used. Um, uh, it is inside of a subnet uh, called ACE, um, and it's inside of the demo network uh, virtual network. So I actually created a subnet to put it in. Specifically, I created a slash 24 that, that, get, that, got, that got put in. Um, and uh, basically, the name of the ACE ThinkMind001 um, gets attached to the app service environment.net domain. So any actual apps that you create are going to be called whatever the app name is. For example, app1.thinkmind001.app service environment.net, like that. Next over here, you can see that it's taken an IP address. The IP address that it would have taken would be the IP address uh, that exists inside of this uh, subnet. Uh, so if you want to have the up to 200 instances that app service environments can have, you are going to have to use a slash 24 uh, network so that uh, you have enough IP addresses to go around. Finally, at the bottom, you have the outbound IP addresses. Uh, these can be used for whitelisting uh, requests that will be coming from this app service environment such that they can access whatever you need them to access. 
So over here now we're looking at the actual configuration uh, for the ACE. You have the option to, en to encrypt the traffic inside of the ACE as well as outside of the ACE. And note that if you encrypt it uh, in the ACE, uh, that it's basically going to slow things down because it's encrypted. Um, by default, um, everything running inside of the ACE app service environment is not encrypted. You have your choice between TLS. Um, you have your preference. You have to, you, the ability to set up preferences around upgrading the app service environment. Um, and then um, in the networking settings, you have the option of whether or not you want to allow FTP incoming uh, connections. If you want remote, um, if you want remote debugging enabled. And if you want to be able to allow new private endpoints to be created. One cool thing that app service environments um, allow you to do is that they allow you to create custom domain suffixes. So if you don't like that app service environment.net um, suffix, you can actually create your own. You can create one that's completely unique. Identity, like all other uh, Azure resources and that allow for this, um, you are able to uh, define a system assigned or user assigned identity for the uh, app service environment. Uh, note that this is the identity for the app service environment as a whole and not the specific app services inside of the environment. And you can see all the apps that are associated with your uh, app service environment here. Um, and then in the app service plan side, you can see all the um, app service plans that you have associated uh, with the app service environment. So we got that created. So now let's go ahead and let's create an app service to put inside of the app service uh, environment. So we're going to select a web app. Let's go ahead and let's create that. Now, this is really interesting to see here because you'll note that when I went to select a region, instead of picking US East, US West and whatnot, uh, under the region, I actually picked uh, the app service environment as the region that I'm putting it into. Um, this is really interesting uh, because it's a great way to think about this. Think of it as an actual environment um, that you're code is that your resources are being deployed into as opposed to thinking of it thinking of it as a resource you'll also note that once uh, my uh, once we selected uh, the region as the uh, app service environment we've created the URL here changed um, from Azure websites.net to the domain suffix that you're going to be using uh, which is think 001 the name of the app service environment dot app service environments.net and if you had a custom domain suffix, then you wouldn't even have this app service environment.net. You could have it say test.local or whatever you want. So we'll go ahead and we'll give it a name. It's called demo one. Oh, demo two. And um, you know, we're just gonna set what version of .NET we want. Um, and um, we're gonna be using the isolated uh, v2. So under database, we don't need anything. Under deployment, I don't think no, nothing needed here. Under networking, you'll see that this is now disabled because uh, we don't need any um, any VNet integration. It literally is already in the VNet by putting it inside of the app service environment. And we're not going to need anything for monitoring as well. So this is disabled. Insights. Uh, we're not going to specify any tags here. Um, and we are all set. So we can create our web app. So with our web app created, uh, let's go ahead and let's try to access it so we can see what happens if you try to access a resource that's inside of an app service environment. So now that our app service environment is up and running, let's go ahead and let's uh, make the VM that we created public once again uh, so that we can actually uh, use uh, RDP to connect into our environment. And the goal here of doing this is so that we are actually able to use that VM to communicate with our app service environment or the website inside of our app service environment. Because remember, 
we can't access it publicly. Okay, so we now connect to our VM. I'm going to download the RDP file, and I'm just going to sign in. So what you should see here now that I've actually accessed it um, is the URL for the actual uh, website that we're connecting to that's sitting inside of our ASC. And as you can see here, um, it does respond with something. Even when you don't have code uh, deployed to it, it, you do actually see something uh, when you access it. As opposed to if you go to, if I take go to that exact URL, uh, publicly from my um, laptop, it'll be as if uh, there's nothing there. It, it won't be routed at all to anything. You're not accessing anything at all. Um, so really, the next thing we have to focus on is basically uh, deploying uh, into the environment. And you would think that a normal deployment, uh, which I'm going to try here, uh, would work. Um, but you'll find that this is actually not the case. Um, and the reason it's not the case is because for us to do the deployment, we're going to have to once again use the custom URL of the app service environment. So let's deploy this and publish it. And you'll see here that, of course, doing so is not going to work. Uh, to get this to work, we actually have to use a DevOps environment. So we're going to use Azure DevOps here. Um, and what we're going to be doing is creating a repository And I'm just going to quickly race through uh, creating all the appropriate resources and configuring the um, pipeline in order to be able to do a build and actually also be able to deploy into the ACE. Now, one thing that we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be using something called a self-hosted agent. And in this case, the self-hosted agent we use is actually going to be the one that's configured inside of this box. So when I refresh this now, you should see that we are now getting uh, the response back for the site. Uh, this is because the site is actually now pushing uh, data towards our server and then bringing the data back. The one issue that we are still having right now is that we have to typically refresh every single time in order for it to work. So every time we change the URL, we have to refresh so let's go ahead and let's fix that uh, real quick. And we're actually going to do this by updating the code inside of the repository and then uh, republishing it. So we can go into home. And we're just going to add, for those of you that know Blazor and on parameters set a sync uh, function. Uh, which essentially is going to just um, recall our uh, custom server. So nothing special there. On parameter set async is called every single time that uh, you change one of the, the URL in some way on one of the parameters. And these are the parameters that you might have specified uh, previously uh, when you configured your page, as we did. So I'm just going to modify uh, the label here so it's easy uh, to see um, that that there's been a change to the server. So I'll just call it calling internal network. And let's go ahead and let's remove that. And then in the button area, let's just make it call internal server so that we're clear. So we can commit that. Um, and then we just need to run the pipeline uh, build again.
And if you want to find out more about hosted agents and deploying with them, uh, you can look uh, on the channel. So we'll go over here and we refresh this now. Um, and now let's make a change to the URL up here. Just call it something else. And you can see that that's changing instantaneously. We're not having to refresh. You can do it for hello, it changes. And this is a test and it all changes. So another quick recap on where we started from and where we're going to in this video. Uh, we started with basically a virtual machine uh, with a public IP address associated with it. Um, we then enabled it so that uh, we were running our web server that we created inside of the virtual machine. And then we built an app service that allowed us to access that um, using VNet integration. So when our public IP address is disabled, we are still able to make a call from the app service down into our code. And this was done to demonstrate uh, that that is possible. Next, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically taking it to the next step um, and taking that app service that's sitting out here and we're actually going to put it directly inside of our virtual network so that uh, it cannot be accessed at all from public. So typically when you access your app service from public but it's down, you still actually get a web page that's displayed that says, hey, uh, this app service is not functioning or whatnot. But when you move it inside of your network, you're going to have zero access to the app service. You will not see it at all. And so with that done, we're not going to need this guy anymore. So we're going to get rid of that. So we're only going to be using RDP to be able to connect through the public IP address into the virtual machine. Because again, remember that once we move it in here, you're, there's really no path uh, coming from the outside world to get to it. The only way that we're going to be able to access this, um, this app service that exists here is by making a call to it uh, from here, in which case it would be a circular call where we first call it, and then it obviously calls that, uh, which then um, executes the code that we have inside of the custom server that we created. The final thing that we're going to do, uh, because when we're here and we're actually inside of this network, we're not going to be able to deploy code into our app service, right? Because uh, the code deployment would be coming from our machine, which is going to be going over a public channel in order to get to it. And because there's no access to that app service publicly, we won't be able to reach it. So in order to solve that problem, we're actually going to take our code and put it into a repository and use build tools to basically publish our code into the, um, the ACE environment. And to do this, we're going to basically be using a hosted agent, which is a capability that Azure DevOps uh, has for doing this. So if you're uh, curious about the Azure DevOps hosted agent capability, I have a video on it uh, in my channel from a while back. I'll link to it here. Uh, go watch that and uh, you'll know all you need to know to be able to create one.